Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, the Smash Z arises once more from those murky depths. And it wants about Truvity. And Wine has traveled to Vulcan. And it brought back something with it SDL controller support. Someone made a tool to back up your Steam saves. Because some developers are lazy jerks, and Flip It's got the money if you got the bugs. 3D Realms is releasing another game. It looks, um, familiar? And Godot have seen the light. The light reflected of 40 Eridani A, reflected off planet Vulcan. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual in Athens, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux, joined every week by our Toronto Man up north, he's not Santa Claus, he's Cthulhu, worshipping um, Canadian ball of jo- no, all the way from Space Britannia. <laughs> that's the last day. Star Trek mention I make on this show, by the way. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. Look at him, he's lovely. <laughs> and together with Shadow Realm Dynamic, helping us form the last, most special bit, known as Govine Voltron. Before we get started, gentlemen, what's going on in your life? Organs, uh, Pedro, it is... Uh, you're done being snowed in. Now it is mm-hmm. you got you got to build a f- mothering ark because it's flooding. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the that snow that's been falling over the past couple of days, it's melting, and now is well. There's black ice warnings all Racist. over the the country. It's like yeah, don't drive, just don't drive. So I, I'm feeling good because I don't have a car here. Yeah. Oh, I, I do not feel I do not feel bad for you at all because I used to live at the bottom of a hill in Calgary where they just let snow melt and then freeze over. So it's a giant fucking ice ramp down to where yep. I live, and I have to I have to walk that literally every day. You get no sympathy from me. Speaking of no sympathy, what are you up to this week, man? Anything fun? I am very, very, hard, very, very adamantly trying to resist. Hitting the buy button on a three hundred dollar four K monitor because I can I if I, I I logical Jordan knows that if I wait I can probably get something even better but impulse buy Jordan's like take it take it take it take it Good take it take it, take it, take it. oh no uh, not a whole lot to report uh, playing around with figuring out why we get screen tearing across our five displays of business and um, virtual cam modules and all that. But I did get the our first internet bill for our half gig interweb service. And I, I think it was um, Atomic. This, this was the bill, but like the installation fee and the BS charges and everything. And I was like, oh, no. And, uh, <laughs> you know, not not comatose level, but yeah, I, it definitely uh, I wanted to go find a quiet corner and rock in it for about 30 minutes. <laughs> but um <laughs> Couldn't do that because I knew we had to be here Saturday night and talk about the horse. Yeah, there's no time for crying. You got to start smacking the horse because it's the Steam Linux update of the week. Coming right into it, man. Free and open source Vulcan on Mac OS and iOS. What's that got to do about Linux? Well, it depends on how you look at it, man. Because, uh, this is definitely a good thing for Linux and the GLVK conversion software that was around for a little while now is now completely open source. Thanks to good guy valve or a good guy steam. And, uh, well, you know, it looks like valve was the money people behind this. They're like, Hey guys, why why don't you just get (laughs) us out here? And what, Why is this a big deal, Jordan? Because, I mean, I understand, like, maybe this is going to encourage developers to just target Vulkan, which will make it easier to get it over to Linux. Well, so the the, the thing is, uh, there's a number of graphics APIs. As you all know out here, we got got the Metal, we got DirectX 12, we got Vulkan, we got DirectX 11 still in heavy use. We still got OpenGL is still... Mm -hmm in use the open GLESs. we'll talk about that a lot more in detail but later but the the idea is um because because vulcan direct x12 and metal all share the same dna vis-a-vis being descended from amd's mantle uh mm-hmm. there are a number of tools uh this uh molten vk being one of the first and more well-known ones 
that will essentially take your spur V shaders and make them into something that um, resembles, uh, in in this case, uh, metal code. Which means that if you are going to be looking at supporting multiple platforms, you can say, "Well, I can write my uh, I can write my entire graphics stack in Vulkan. This will cross compile it to Metal, which means that I got OS 10, iOS, and all that stuff covered. And now I have um, PlayStation 4, <laughs> yeah, um, Belches and <laughs> Linux covered. <laughs> so, so th- this 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 is good all around. It some it removes one additional language." From the whole mess, and this, uh, if you do a little bit more research into this, into um, the molten uh, molten technology stack, they are looking at uh, actually adding DirectX 12 support to this as well. So you can write everything in Vulkan and have it output in HLSL DirectX 12 format, which allows you to target Xbox and Windows 10 and put your stuff on the Microsoft Store for whatever freaking reason. So this this is this is good. Again, it simplifies the development. It allows you to use one low level tool to cover basically all your bases. And yeah, it, it's it's kind of nice that the industry has decided. Yeah, you know what? We're just standardizing on Vulkan, and we'll make tools that will. Make well, that I don't the know case. if we can say the industry. I think this uh, we were talking about it in the <laughs> pre shows and was. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is this is Valve saying you guys just need to pull a summer and get your shit together and let, let's just use this Vulcan thing. DX12 can go die in a fire, but hey, I mean if it can target it, that's a good thing. And you know, Valve's in the business of making money; they're going to make more money if mm-hmm. people can game on iOS and also with Linux because we we got Tomb Raider coming out from Feral Vulcan only title, their previous title F1 2016 2017. Uh, 17, yeah. yeah. Vulcan. Uh, we're going to be talking about Godot going all Vulcan later on in the show. And I, I saw a lot of people uh, screaming about, they're like, well, this, you know, finally this is good. And, you know, Mac, Apple, they're evil creating metal. And now cut them a little bit of slack because when they came up with metal, it was at the same time that um, AMD with mantle technology and it just wasn't there. They, they would they were working on it, and Kronos yeah. didn't have the Vulcan standard together, mm-hmm. so they made what they now, had. Now, at here, the time. Here, 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 here's 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 the big question, though: is this is very this would be very out of character for Apple, but now that uh, Zombie Steve Jobs is no longer pulling the reins of the company, do you think Apple will eventually pull a canonical and ask devs like, you know what, this Vulcan thing? Yeah, we're not going to make you have to learn our proprietary shit. Well, do, that's, do that's, that's kind of what happen? I was getting to. Is I, I don't think Apple wants to have to deal with it. Period. <laughs> They're like, okay, if, yeah. I, if, if we, we got a nice simple tool, I don't, I don't, what I'm saying is I don't think they're going to fight against it. I think this is win-win for everyone. Uh, Pedro, you had a yeah. few things to say. Well, uh, my things were like the cynic in me doesn't really believe that this is going to make much, if any, difference when it comes to the amount of games we see ported to Linux, if nothing else, in the fact that uh, no one's really using Metal outside of Feral or DX12 outside of like three or four games that came out for the Windows Store. And, well, Vulcan, we've seen some games come out with Vulcan, mostly from Feral. We've seen the Talos Principle and uh, Serious Sam Fusion kind of show that, yes, you can do Vulcan, you can do it well, and the performance gains are very much there. Valve have also done a bit of that with Dota 2. But uh, uh, the kinds of developers, it, it, Doom. it would do. Doom, yes, Doom but that was a, Windows only, so Doom, Doom so it one. doesn't count. Yeah. Look, it's, Windows it's, only. It's, it's so um, it, it absolutely it absolutely counts if we're discussing Metal and DirectX. <laughs> so go fuck yourselves. I, I was using those as as examples, but the kind of developers that only release games for Windows and Mac. They kind of strike me as the kind of developers who really can't be asked slash don't really have the knowledge to know and code in low level APIs. Hmm. True. Uh, and and to 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 your to your point, I don't think that this will actually make more developers uh, be more willing to port stuff to Linux. But if you can get to the point where clicking export does become a viable strategy, then I think we should start working towards that. We got. We got to make yeah. Linux a very low effort to support target to make it. Cause, cause, cause then there's like no the, excuse. The, the yeah, yeah. The, the rhetoric. The rhetoric you typically hear is, "Oh, it's additional costs and testing." Blah 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 blah. If we can, if we can work to reduce that, 
then at the very least we can go yell at we we can be vindicated when we yell at developers. Yeah. <laughs> Backing up your Steam Linux saves for fun and profit. Yeah, our, 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 yeah are, are are you a bit floppy? Because I need to I need to back that ass <laughs> up. Uh anyways. Uh, this is SLSK. I, I want to read it as like Slee Stack from uh, Land of the Lost. Anyways, this is a neat little utility, the Steam Linux, Linux Swiss Knife. Uh, apparently, Swiss Army Knife is trademarked. Well, um, has, a, has a community maintained database that uh, keeps track of where all your game's save files are located and will give you a utility to back them up, stick them in the cloud, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And, you know, for, first off, you think, well, that's all well and good. You can do like tar cvjf config backup dollar date, whatever <laughs> dot tar ez2 and just get all your dot files. <laughs> but this throws a nice little GUI on top of it. Um, it makes it so that you don't have to hunt down the more esoteric safe file locations. And despite the fact that Steam Cloud Sync is a thing, for whatever reason, some freaking developers just don't want to turn that on. I don't know, man. I mean, I definitely get to save that's with like, it. That's uh, like one of the huge selling points yeah. of Steam, too. Oh, like yeah. Sense. I mean, if your game doesn't have cloud support in 2018, you're a bad developer, and you really should feel bad. Uh, <laughs> hey, let, let's divide by zero. Let's see if we can get this thing on. Well, like early, I know early access isn't around, but if we can get it on Steam with cloud save, it'd be great. Meta as hell. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yo, 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 dog. Probably you like could. Save, so I cloud this, saved your cloud right. save. I'm not entirely sure the software bits in uh, Steam follow the same rules as the games specific ones do. But if they do, yeah, no, I'm totally down. I'll put the hundred bucks down myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, let, let's be honest, gentlemen. That's basically what we got to do to get it on. There's no voting anymore. Yeah. Um, nope. <laughs> Battle tech is battle late. And uh, no one seems to be upset because they kind of said, hey, it's going to be a little bit late. Pedro. A little bit, and I was taking a, a, a bit of a drinky. Sorry about that. Uh, it is Battletech, and people were asking, so uh, where's that Linux port, yo? And, well, they said, we did say it was going to be a bit late. And so people were just eager because it's a new release. It's a new game that's out on Steam. It's the... Um, not exactly turn -based mech, mech warrior, warrior type thing. Yeah, turn-based mech warrior. Uh, and people were like, yeah, we want we want ourselves some of that. We really, really would very much like that. And this is uh, Hairbrain Schemes. We already talked about it um, a couple of weeks ago, that they were going to be releasing it late. And at this point, like I mentioned back then, when and if it comes out on Linux, which I hope it does, don't get me wrong, I will give it a look then up until right now. It's Windows and Mac only. Fuck you guys. Hey, man. No, I got to give him put, put, put down the pitchforks because give, give him that three to four months to do that. And to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't realize until just then you're like, it's turn based. It's like, oh, look, zero fucks given. Um, <laughs> So it, it's total war with Max. Got it. Um, actually, no, that's not. True. It's a shadow run, shadow uh, run. with Max. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, or not, not really with Max. Mac, it's Mexcom, yeah. which has which is Max not a Mexican <laughs> Max, Max It's com. not a Mexican communications <laughs> company, man. It is now. <laughs> man, that is so racist. We're just gonna have to go to the next story. <laughs> All right. This is this is this is Fuku. Or fucktopia, rather. I, 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 I am one with the. I am one who is a fan of the fuck montos, and so I, I can appreciate this. This is a early access side scrolling beat 'em up. Um, a little. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Charlie Murder, but you know, without the humor or the charm. But it is a game uh, where you you basically just run around and try and get a high score, uh, beating stuff up. Um, Mm -hmm. the, uh, they have a little note in their uh, description. They say each player has his score to try as much as possible, which makes perfect <laughs> sense. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> this is exactly what I've been looking for in a game. Thank you, Fucktopia. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, 17 bucks. So it's a little it's a little or it's 18 bucks Canadian. It's a little pricey for early mm -hmm. access. You get you get to play as like Goro after like post Mortal Kombat after he really let himself go, mm -hmm. uh, which is <laughs> a thing, I guess. 
I, I, I don't know. Also, also those uh, those Steam requirements seem a little scanty. Apparently, uh, you just need a 512 meg <laughs> stick of RAM in your GPU in a, in a AGP <laughs> slot, and you're good to go. I mean, okay, having low uh, spec requirements probably a good thing because the game does look like it. You know, Streets of Rage with a more gory, deformed type of uh, protagonist. Still a better love enemies. story than Street Fighter. Oh, yes. <laughs> doesn't have Valve helping them with the port. Mm -hmm. uh, in any case, uh, this one really does... I was looking at the trailer, it's like, okay, so it's a simple beat-em-up style game, Streets of Rage, uh, Charlie Murder, what was the other one? Uh, vampire... Aries. Vampire. Dishwasher, Vampire Smile. Yes, the Vampire Smile, Dishwasher, yeah. Um, uh, and it's... Okay, it looks like they really wanted to make this game with this specific art style and whatever story it happens to have, if it has any. But when it came time to come up with a title, they went, oh, fuck. Mm. Don't have an idea for Topia. a title. What are we going to call it? Fucktopia. <laughs> hey, man. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm not against that. It looks uh, <laughs> like it's done in the art style of something like Motorosha Breeds. And yeah. it, it does have quite the price on it to be early access, but it looks competently done. It's got online multiplayer, so it's definitely something I mm -hmm. might give a chance. Unlike this next game, because not because of the game <laughs> itself. It, well, all right, it's, it's probably because of the game itself. I, I mean, I mean, what the the concept of like a children's card game based dungeon doesn't excite and tell me that's even. not the rapiest looking Shut motherfucker that you've seen in the past <laughs> three minutes. Um, I, I don't, I don't know, because I've been staring at Pedro's face for a while. I said, anyways, right. this is Lost in the Dungeon. Um, apparently hey. it's going to be available March twelfth. It is a uh, card based dungeon crawling role playing game. So not quite like Hand of Fate. I was thinking more along the lines of like. I have Beholder meets Hearthstone or something like Metal Gear Acid, where es essentially they removed all the dungeon crawling mechanics and replaced it with a card game, which I guess could be decent if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't have word on a price for this. The system requirements are mm -hmm. relatively modest. Hey, the Fedora 25 is listed first. I like you. You know what? You get some points for that fucking lost in the dungeon <laughs> good on you good on you for listing the best operating system as the first operating system you support um yeah they have uh yeah and that, that's basically it card game crawl in the dungeon uh yeah but yeah it's it it's got the android look to it you can tell that everything is really big like you would use your big fat fingers to press down on uh it's, I don't know, I guess I'll have to give it a shot to uh, actually say one way or the other, but uh, we're waiting until March 12th yeah, for it to come I, out. I looked at it, my first thought when I just saw it in the store was, wait a minute, did Artifacts Monday, the hidden item, you just spot them, it's like, did, did they try to make Hand of Fate without the fighting mechanic at it? And it kind of looked like it on a budget. <laughs> Turned out it wasn't them, so yeah, I agree with you, it does kind of have that Android-ish um, vibe going on to it so we've given this next one a mention before but it is out and it's mostly negative rocking in at 38 oh yeah <laughs> armada modern tanks uh you talk about something that looks and plays like a fuck mothering android game this will do it but hey it is priced to try it and immediately uninstall it it is completely free it's tanks man oversimplified tanks you basically fart around and take shots at each other is the best I could determine. I did put it on the system. I, I gave it a try and a couple issues. Uh, it looks like it's going to be, you know, pay to win, set up something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's mm -hmm. the thing. Only has servers in the EU and Asia. Tells you your target right there. Uh, the, graphically, we're, we're like PS2, uh, but PS2 had less pop in with 3D titles because... This is just laughably bad. It might be fun to actually play because it is, uh, it could be bad enough to be good. And again, it's completely it, it, free. It, it, it's so. the, yeah, it's, it's the sort of bad that like, if you get some friends to like derp around with, mm -hmm. then you can like riff on the game as you're playing it sort of thing. Right. I mean, it could definitely be a, an entertainment thing. And we, we got to be careful when we do stuff like that because when we bring like an LGC crowd to a game developer, should be like, people are playing our game. But I don't think it'd be mm -hmm. a case with this. I, I don't know what the 
marketing strategy or business model is with that. But it, maybe maybe it just mines Dogecoin. I don't know. I, honestly, uh, I saw you start up the game on Steam. It's like, oh, what's that game? And I went to the store. It's like, oh, mostly negative. Okay, let's uh, read the reviews. Oh, wait, I can't actually read the reviews because most of them are in languages I do not speak. So, yeah, yeah apparently... Klingon, no, mostly. No. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, in Too any easy. case... Uh... <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to hey, give hey, you hey, credit. Hey, you're, you're, you're fired. You said that was the last Star Trek <laughs> reference you'd do on the show. Get the I fuck out of here. Got to give Pedro Damn credit it. for when he does that horrible Klingon. Like, the, uh, you know what Klingon he's doing? He's doing Discovery because the Klingons have speech impediments. You do uh-huh. a good job at that. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, man, it's the only one I can do. Hey, it was great, too, when the reveal happened. I'm like, wow, that's how you're going to read that line? Cool. Mm. Nice. Good job. <laughs> that's definitely a thing. Hey, uh, <laughs> speaking of remakes, man. <laughs> Indeed. It's not actually a remake. It's a reimagination type of thing well it's 3d realms they know how to do one thing and one thing only and that is duke nukem 3d the old one yeah and well if the graphics look familiar it's because it's well it's duke nukem the old one uh it's ion maiden though so instead of uh having a um really really bad um male protagonist you're probably going to have a really really bad female protagonist but hey who's counting at this point uh i'm just looking forward to it actually coming out because it's it's an early access right now and uh over here in poundland it costs 13.94 so it's a bit of a stretch for something that's in early access but it's the yeah. realms they do have a good uh track record as far as i'm concerned mm-hmm it's twenty dollars here. Oh, yeah! Ow. that hurts. Wow, man, this thing. Okay, the the one thing that really absolutely got my attention with this business when I first looked at it, I was like, "Oh shit, Shadow Warrior guy's gonna sue some people." Then it's like, "Oh, it's the, it's the Shadow Warrior guys." Then it's reading more, and it's like they did mm-hmm. a really good job. It's like, wait a minute, this thing's Eduke. What? Okay, <laughs> that that. That's not even retro, man. That, that's like legit. You, that that would be like somebody mm-hmm. going back and doing a NES game or a SNES game and being assembly. Yeah, it's like okay, you got it. <laughs> also, yeah, yeah. also, uh, I'm, I'm, also, I'm, fuck that engine yeah. with the hinge doors, man. Ugh. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the the system requirements are pretty steep on there too. Uh, I, I guess I guess they're just trying to be safe or something. No, I don't know. Look, well, I don't know what you're looking at, but I'm I'm kind of impressed by the storage. Only a hundred megs. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this this is true. But when you need like two gigs of RAM, and they recommend a six forty or an R seven two sixty, like for for uh, if it's a sixty four bit, if it's a sixty four bit executable, and they want to try and cut down on the loading screens. That's probably something you're going to be looking at, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, are we going to see some new like Dark Places games? There's a there was a new version of Urban Terror that came out. Are people going to start using Quake Three Engine to put out some new stuff? Is this gonna be the new hipster pixel platforming? No, we're making new games on retro engines, guys. And after three years of dealing with that bullshit, we'll be able to trace it back to its origin, and that's what you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, when hipster you're pixels welcome. like too much for you, we, we can get even more basic. Absolutely. Oh, this yeah. is basic. It's basic eight on mm. Steam. You ever, you, ever, you ever think, man, I really miss playing basic or making making games in basic. And by making games, I mean creating <laughs> infinite loops because that's the only thing you did. Uh, you can you can pick this up. It is um, about 20 bucks. You get a basic IDE with some game dev tools cooked in like a pix- some sprite creation uh, tools. Mm-hmm. So you can use it to make some old looking games. 30, go to 10. Yeah. It's, uh, I saw an Acorn Electron uh, for sale at one of the uh, charity shops here. <laughs> uh, that's kind of, the, this is the kind of games that you would uh, sort of kind of play back in one of those consoles all the way back in the late 80s, what early 90s. What the fuck all is their recommended OS for Windows is Cosmos 1.0 processor quantum. Uh, 
it's Graphics the same for Linux better. and for Mac. And, 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 so and I don't Mac. know what the hell they're on about. <laughs> yeah, Fuck it, 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 it's it's the Carl Sagan operating system. <laughs> it, it, it runs the tree in. Get, get the fuck uh, out of here! And, and apparently, it also needs uh, 300, 380 or thirty eight thousand nine hundred eleven gigabytes of RAM. All right. All right. So yeah. Someone looks like uh, it looks like someone actually ran their uh, units through Google Translate, and Google Translate was like, "I don't know what this is, so I'm just going to assume." Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I got to do some research on it because I saw that it was developed by Tony Wang. No jokes. Mm -hmm. I, I know a Tony Wang who is that that type of shit is right up his alley. But um, hey, that's the thing. If you're a patron, you can uh, suggest stuff in our show notes because you have access to them early. And uh, mm -hmm. lo and behold, this next one comes from M Mr. Fox Dog. And this is Foxtail, or as I like to call it, Dangerously Furry. Um, yes. A classic quest inspired by the mid-90s games. Complex quest, da -da -da, beautiful graphics, that's fucking questionable. Hipster pixel, <laughs> atmosphere mystery and adventure early act this is point and click adventure a genre that died for good reason uh currently in early access 6.99 kind of price to sell i mean if this is what you are into uh that goes for multiple multiple themes of what i just said it requires steamos 2.0 not 4 gigajoules of ram and another 100 megs of hard drive space um you <laughs> Look, it's a furry game that doesn't revolve around sex or being about like some stupid Sonic fanfic. I still haven't forgotten you, Freedom Planet. Uh, no, um, Doc, that fox is wearing short shorts <laughs> and looks slightly depressed in every image. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, God, kill me now. So, so, so <laughs> is, is this the answer to uh, what would happen if dogs would wear pants? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, there that, it is. That, 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 There's a canine that, that, wearing that, pants right there. <laughs> yeah, that, that 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 meme is finally solved. It's over. <laughs> I think we can stick a fork in it, just like we can stick a fork <laughs> in this horse this very week. Coming up next, now is the best time to get into Bitcoin mining. Yes, sir. Spend lots of money. Are you done? Are you done watching us with our clothes on? Because we're about to take them off and no. wear ourselves out to you. How does that sound? Nope. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll keep the clothes on, but we'll still make wear the burning ourselves out stop. to you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, make up, make up your goddamn mind. I, I'm, am, am I doing this or not? <laughs> Listen, man, I'm not saying that's not an improvement. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm totally uh, down uh, for some Cthulhu right about now. <laughs> Uh, listen, if we if we if we need nudity, we'll just bring Sandy on. That, that's go. that's kind of how this is all. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, it, I, I mean, maybe 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 we'll get some Sandy on if we can get some more money. You can you can maybe ensure that by getting over to uh, LinuxGameGas.com, clicking that support button. All sorts of exciting new links for you to press: affiliate links, wish lists, QR codes for Magic Internet money. Recurring monthly donations, all sorts of things you can enter your credit card for, and it's good stuff. Um, we also got the Amazon. Yeah, speaking of wish list, we got that Amazon wish list. If you um, buy us something on there, like uh, maybe some LED lighting strips, you get to show up on uh, Frank's little fuck wall and uh, illuminate Ven, make him have like light switch raves. But of course, you can always head on over to patreon.com slash Linux game cast. There's lots of good stuff you can get for giving us a buck a week including access to our Discord uh, channel, some uh, early show notes access, uh, you get your name in the credits, you get access to some uncut VODs a couple days early, and you can even support, you can even add stuff to the show like Mr. Foxdog does sometimes because he pays to play. We're, we're like pay to win, except we actually give you stuff in return. Uh, but we got we to gotta, we gotta thank some people. We got to thank Betty for... Uh, did did uh, Betty go on the Patreon or was that a uh, fuckwall thing? Uh, Patreon, man. Patron. Patron. And uh, and um, Matthew L, not Matthew C, uh, said <laughs> up their pledge. Thanks a lot. And uh, then uh, tell, mm -hmm. tell us about this illuminating garbage behind you. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> as uh, Steve-O eloquently put it, man, I am trying to recreate a strip club, but he went for a skating rink. I'm going for strip club. Basically, I just want to see if these work. These are probably going to end up with Frank uh, on his fine upstanding cannibal walls but yeah man we, we got the uh 
LED lighting strip, which is uh, RGB, according to Strider. I just tried to call it LED, but Strider keeps calling it LEDs. And um, that's that's the thing that came from. Check it out. That's one of the little things you can send us a note if you pick up anything on our wish zone. It is uh, from Jellybean, Mr. Jack Bryant. You might know him. You might love him. He is truly a terrifying person. But boom, I, 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 got, I, I got it right there, man. Got it on the fine upstanding cannibal wall. And now we can do, hang on, let's see. Uh, I think we can do this. Maybe. I don't know. I'm pressing buttons. <laughs> Yay, change color. There we go. That's ridiculous. Get some boots. Get some boots. We can do that now, and that's horrifying. I, I don't know what the RGB code is for pank. I, I'm going <laughs> to do my best to search that out. I think there's enough Dude, room for do, like... Do, do, does it have like a uh, battle seizure robot, robot preset? Quite possibly. I think there's like room for two more names or anything from our wish zone to go on fuck wall... 2.0, which is also 1.0 because we screwed it up, and that's going to go on its own. We're going to redo this entire shot thing, but that's going to be, then we're going to have to move to 3.0. So for whatever bizarre, twisted moon logic you have in your head, you want to get on there, get on there soon. All right, that's enough shielding. Thanks, everyone, for helping us out, um, keeping us all ad-free, independent, and uh, slightly cussy on uh, Saturdays, and uh, letting us do a show on Wednesdays, too. Tiniest, which is, uh, tiniest bit. Slightly and, less and, and, and some streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Do, yeah. Do, do you think once we fill up the Fuckwall Tupato, like maybe autograph it and put it up for like a bit if anyone wants it? Fuck no. It's, gonna, it's always going to be in any carnation of the studio. It'll be like, yep, there I am. Just, just fuck ball. Okay. So it's just gonna, it's just gonna be the, the overflow fuck ball. Yeah, I mean, fuck. It, it's gonna be the generation. The over fuck ball. <laughs> right. It, it's Frank's fuckos, baby. Uh, but let's uh, let's get into the news, man. Yeah, no driver news this week. But then apparently, uh, we were wrong last we're, week. We're full, we we're always full of shit, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, yeah. man, forget everything we I said last week anyway, because this week the new rumor is the GTX 2080 27 Ampere. Ampere, I don't know, man. Lamp Ampere. 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 They're going to be coming and be shown off by the NVIDIAs at GTC 2018, man. And for gaming, AI and compute. Uh, whoa, okay, that guy's one mustache away. Uh, <laughs> That's Ampere, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't no, know. No, that, 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 that's Turing, man. Don't you freaking know people? Yeah, GDDR6, <laughs> and uh, they're saying 2018. I think kind of coming to the surprise of absolutely fuck, mothering, and no one, but here's all I want from you, NVIDIA. Call me. Uh, <laughs> make some wicked cheap, hella powerful mining cards so I can get a 1070 Ti for under... $500. No, this is not a weird, bizarre moon future. If you haven't looked, if you could get a 1070 Ti for $500, you've robbed somebody at this point, man. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, they're speculating it's going to be like a $1,400, $1,500 card for the 28s. Oh, that's, that, that, that's a bit of a spicy meatball. Part of it has to do probably with the uh, GDDR6 that they're going to be shipping on the Ampere uh, GPUs, and yeah, they're 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 talking a little bit too in this article about um, a Turing card, which is not the programming language you learned in grade school, but in <laughs> fact a uh, specifically a compute and AI card. So maybe maybe that's going to be Ven's wish come true, a uh, some something that you can use for mining, so that uh, the GPU prices can drop and we can actually play our video games on super powerful computers, as opposed <laughs> to dealing with people buying everything for Bitcoin mining. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just confused about the whole like uh, architecture uh, nickname that they gave him because I remember back when Pascal came out, that's the 1080, 1070, 1070 Ti's, what have you, uh, and they were saying, oh, Volta is going to be like the the next series uh, based on uh, you know Volta. I uh, can't remember his. Now, first now, name. Do, do, do you think uh, do you think that? Um this is going to be a brand new architecture or are they going to take uh, Maxwell slap some faster Ram on it and call it a day? <laughs> well, with Maxwell, they slapped some faster Ram and they also cut down the, uh, the power usage, uh, comparative to Kepler before it. So 
Maybe. I mean, there's really not much that much of a difference, architecturally speaking, that you can make at this point, because like seven nanometer is not feasible yet for mass production. I assume, unless Nvidia kind of cracked what whatever it was that they needed to to make that feasible, but. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see because apparently uh, Ampere or uh, Ampere or mm-hmm. uh, the, the Amp guy is going to be the new uh, conser grade uh, GPU family. Well, I well, firmly believe will like come if after you peel Volta. the sticker off yeah. the amp- Lamprey, it, it says <laughs> Volta under the sticker. So <laughs> probably because yeah, we had one uh well one GPU that people were looking at in the Volta family, which was a Titan V, which mm-hmm. wasn't a gaming card, it wasn't a GeForce GTX, it was an NVIDIA Titan V, and that was exclusively for GPU compute, and it cost three thousand dollars, which you could make the argument that it was a three thousand dollar Tesla GPU. Sure. <laughs> I, I mean, let, let's be real. It is a three thousand dollar Tesla because, with the magic of binning, yeah. it's all the same goddamn <laughs> silicon. All yep. the same goddamn silicon. Coming so, up um, next, Smash Z a- is AMD back. graphics now. Hey man, the Smash Z handheld gaming PC spec has been finalized. And no, this is not a repeat from last year or the year before that or the year before that. Uh, but we we have we have very solid 3D renders and this same fucking graphic. Uh, mm-hmm. What are they saying? Characteristics: 12 watt, 25 watt TDP, uh, four CPU cores, eight threads, two gigahertz CPU frequent, 3.6 boost, 1.1 gigahertz AMD Radeon Vega 8 CPU, two megs of L2 cache, DDR4, 2400 memory support. Um, here's the thing. Okay. Something that kind of irritates me. I mean, because this is like the second or possibly third hardware revision. <laughs> okay, third? For a third, product yeah. that doesn't exist. Okay, remember first, first. I'm going to get this on. First, they tried to pass it off. Remember when they did the LCD screen, which is like a wire running uh, off for it? Uh-huh. And they're like, yeah, that, it's totally attached to the device, you guys. E- even the most hopeful were like, yeah, it's bullshit. Come on. Then they released this 3D printed chunk prototype. This is before we had um, Vega APUs. This thing's never going to work. <laughs> then it was going to be Linux, and they're like, no, we're going to run Windows on it now. Uh, yeah. And like back in 2016, they did their second thing. They raised like 680,000 wet stinky caches. But what they do say in the article, the final specs for the console will be announced and an alpha version will be shown. But brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, <laughs> It won't be available to play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, the original backers of this thing must really have some purple faces right now because they've been holding their breath for a couple of years at this point. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, mm-hmm. even, even, even if by some miracle they're able to come to market with this thing, they're able to get the price point down, uh, they're able to actually ship units, no one will ever buy this because no one wants this. If you... Like what? It's it's like a seven inch screen. It has a performance profile comparable to an R5 2500 uh, yeah. U. Maybe on a good day when it decides to not completely drain your battery. I I, I, I don't know. I, I I really I really feel like if you're gonna go with the portable system, go with the lower system requirements. Focus on battery life. Focus on like actual ergonomics so that people don't have cramps when they're holding onto this massive freaking thing. Yeah, this thing looks like an Atari Lynx, man. I mean, and that was not a comfortable piece of kit. If you want portable gaming that has decent battery life, uh, they got a thing called a Switch. Switch. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. It's baked. And we dug, uh, Pedro, I, I kind of dug back into this company's history, and it's sketchy as hell, man. Oh, so. yeah. And how the hell are they still finding the money to keep putting out well i guess they're not finding the money right now because they 
keep uh, promising new things. And look, it's a new hardware revision. Please give us more money. How the hell please, do please they investors, still find investors? That's something, that's something yeah. we need to bring up. The whole point of this is like, hey, and you can pre-order it now again for the second time. How, or something. how are people not going just shit or get off the pot right now? I don't know, man. Yeah. You have some people that are infinitely hopeful. And listen, a lot of times I would end this little bit by saying, I hope we're all wrong, but there's no way you can be wrong about this at this point. Um, let's talk about wine, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> it gets you drunk. Hey, man, it's going to live long and prosper because 3.3 is out. And what's new in this release? Check this business out. The beginnings of Vulcan support. Everyone is ecstatic about that, including myself. Direct 3D multi-thread command stream enabled by default. I think that was also in the last version, too. Um, That's CSMT, like the full CSMT, mm -hmm. now enabled by default. And uh, support for game controllers through SDL. So that's kind of big news, guys. Yeah, yeah the sad it thing is, is the, and, it's SDL 1.2. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, even if it is, it's still going to be better controller support than uh, Wine had previously. Um you know, having uh, CSMT and multi-sample textures enabled by default is going to make a lot of DX11 titles not just run, but run better. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's something that Wine kind of needs, because there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that do every now and again. It's like, oh, I have this game on. Let's see if it works. Uh, let's see if it works in Wine. And it doesn't. So, yeah, it's uh, it'll be nice yeah. to, to have that. So, so we we got we got we got to thank uh, Waterwick Colden Blander for uh, his uh, work on the Wine Vulcan stuff. Now, my understanding is that Wine already has some limited degree of Vulcan support in vis a vis. If the application uses Vulcan, Wine will just be like, yeah, yeah, just pass it on to the underlying mm -hmm. driver. Mm -hmm. So, what 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 is what does this actually get us? What what uh, is, is uh, actually official, translating? Official uh, actually translating DX uh, calls to Vulcan or the beginnings of that. Mm. So I, I, I'm curious if they're going to look at that one. We covered this like years ago, but someone was like making a remaking a D3D9.dll that was basically just re-implementing all of the DirectX 9 functions in Vulcan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, only doing... the official way. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You think? Well, yeah, at least according from what I sort of a model. Hey, man. Yeah, uh, from what I could get from the code, it is very early days, but that seems to be what they're doing. It's like taking those DX calls, passing them off to Vulkan, because you know, low level API, lower CPU overhead, lower latency means better performance at the end of the day. So That's good. Looking I mean, forward it's to going to make it more performant, and you know, it's getting better and better DX11 support every single day. Mm -hmm. And when asked for comment, uh, virtual programming said, fuck. Uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, um, well, I am on Team Sweeney. I have been on Team Sweeney for a while. Uh, he's been uh, having issues with uh, Windows over, well, the past several years, and he's been very vocal about it on Twitter. And, well, a couple of days ago, uh, he uh, said, so, what's the best widely used Linux distribution to try out for desktop use, including dev and gaming, Anna, Montana, but not exclusively gaming? Linux. <laughs> and uh, to be Lin fair, Linspire, uh, man. I <laughs> I was actually very, very surprised to see the Linux community go out and say, just use Ubuntu. Just don't, just don't, don't get too into it. Just use Ubuntu. Just do that. And, uh, um, Oh my God, Brian that, Linuxing, you, you need to tap the brakes, son. You did like <laughs> nine posts in a row. But, uh, after I saw all of that, I started like asking myself, so what's the end result here? What are we going to get out of this are we going to get a linux convert or like uh gary newman version 2 because we saw how yeah. well that worked <laughs> i i think i think what's gonna happen is i i think i think mr mr sweeney is far 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 from his breaking point 
Um, if anything, this is going to be like, oh, I tried using Ubuntu and I couldn't get it installed and drivers didn't work and blah, blah, blah. And I'm too lazy to Google search how to fix things. Which on he's Linux. said before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, I mean, and, he, and here's the thing, like as much as I'd love for Tim to get all on the Linux train, Linux on UE4 is an afterthought. It's being maintained by the community. Epic really hasn't made any sort of bids to sort of say, hey, you know what's great for developing games using our software? Linux, because it has a lot of useful development tools like Valgrind and GDB and et cetera, et cetera. Insert your favorite Linux debugging tool here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Toggle even. Toggle. Or, uh, was... Voggle, rather. Voggle. Yeah. To Vogel. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a bunch of response when I first saw this. I, fortunately, I, I got a tap first on that tw tweet. It's like, just use Hannah Montana <laughs> Linux because the reason I said that is what a lot of people I don't believe realize is like, y'all's getting trolled. Okay. <laughs> Some of y'all just nom that bait and got pulled on. I don't think a lot of people understood that. You know, it's like, I, I got to understand. I want to believe. My, Microsoft. Yeah. Really, motherfuckers, I'll let both of you talk for like five minutes. <laughs> All right. So, you know, uh, he's, he's not going to be looking into Linux or anything like that, man. It's just not going to happen, man. This is like straight up posturing. It's like, ooh, yeah, I might switch over to Linux and focus on, you know, screw you, Microsoft. <laughs> the only reason you could think about doing something like that outside of just like straight up trolling the community because... That's just something he'd absolutely do. Or maybe he could be pulling a valve because valve definitely, <laughs> definitely um, threw down oh, yeah. to Microsoft when they're like, yo, we're, we're doing this Linux thing because your Windows Store thing is bullshit and we, we want option two. But yeah, Microsoft knows that Epic, it's a game engine. They don't do whatever. That, I've just seen people trying to hit that angle and I just don't think that's it in... Yeah, but Valve was able to pull it off and kind of get a reaction out of Microsoft, and they, they kind of tapped the brakes on that Windows Store thing. So, yeah. Anyhow. But no, 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 it's that's spooling back up again. So, we, we, we don't know yeah. what's going to happen in the far. <laughs> you can't keep future. that stupid Well, it down. spooled back up, and then it went, oh, wait, no one actually wants to release any more games on the Windows Store? Huh. But w w okay. listen, man. Like, <laughs> Windows 10s, man. Windows 10s. <laughs> Next week we're gonna uh, uh, enable full screen. Uh, it's gonna be the great. The GIMP version of Windows 10. Yes, let's use that. <laughs> so soon, soon you'll be able to disable VSync finally. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, let's talk about some Godot. Indeed, Godot. Well, they have a big old Vulcan logo right at the top of the article. And they had to re uh, reword the title of the article because if you look at the URL, it says abandoning GLES uh, three uh, Vulcan and GLES two, and I was looking at that. It's like, what the hell does that mean? And I clicked to it, and they had already reworded it and said moving to Vulcan and GLES two point oh instead of Open GLES three point oh. It's like, finally, thank you. Took you long enough. Yes. So uh, th their rationale behind dumping uh, OpenGL ES 3.0 is that uh, even though it is supported in Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, iOS, WebGL 2.0, the drivers to support that, NVIDIA has good drivers. So if you have like an Android Tegra device, you're gold. But most other uh, Android uh, ARM-based GPUs that people are uh, shoving into phones and tablets, what have you, they're not so good. And the drivers for that are really bad. And they said, you know what? Everything supports OpenGL ES 2.0 really well. We'll do that. And we'll also include Vulkan because, hey, guess what? For Android devices, that lower level API makes a really, really big difference, especially in like uh, CPU usage and power consumption. So yeah, I'm happy to see this. More yeah, Godot I games. I mean, it definitely turns out that we might have been right with that wacky Vulcan becoming a real thing. Mm -hmm. And definitely, man, OpenGLES 3.0, definitely not long for this world. However, Molten VK, that business. Thank you, Valve, for sort. I don't know exactly what played out, but 
Money, money play that. Hey, man, um, going open source <laughs> definitely had a hand in this. And I think it's just the beginning. Absolutely. And that was kind of one of the big things about uh, Vulcan adoption being hindered in uh, Godot and other, and other uh, engines is going, going back to what I said in the Steam News segment about support. If you, 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 want, you want to reduce the total amount of man hours you have to commit to producing your product because otherwise that's money wasted. So now mm-hmm. it's trivial to get your Spurs V shit cross compiled to metal compatible shaders. Uh, the, the Godot guys saw this and said, well, that was sort of our main concern <laughs> is we need to retain good Mac and iOS support. Now we can have that without really needing to invest time and energy into creating our own solution for this. Ha- have fun. And uh, the, I mean, it's, it's coming. They say they're, um, going to maintain uh, GLES 2.0 for the foreseeable future. It's going to coexist with Vulkan until that stuff stabilizes. So good good on them. Good on Godot. Mm-hmm. We're done waiting mm-hmm. for them. Libbity, uh, ibbity, bibbity, jibbity, babu. Absolutely. Uh, he, he's created a little program called Flippet Bounties. Uh, he has some cash to throw around, as it seems. And uh, he mm-hmm. has a bunch of work he'd rather not do. So... Uh, he has opened up Flippin' Bounties to farm out work to lovely, lovely volunteers who would like maybe a little experience in some game dev, uh, maybe students who want to actually get their name in a um, in like a production used code base. Uh, this this is really smart, and especially uh, for a way to get people to contribute to FNA and SDL too, because it can't just all fall on Flippin' because the second he gets hit by a raptor or eaten by a bus, those projects are dead. So you can get paid, you can get some, uh, you get to keep your code, which is really, mm-hmm. really nice. It's, mm-hmm. you, it is fully yours. There's no Ubuntu CDL weird or client, client license nonsense. Um, and you get your name on a fairly widely used piece of software. That's also good. Also, uh, I, uh, the other smart thing he did was, uh, other companies who are using SDL2 or, um, FNA can open up their own bounties. So if they say, Hey, we've mm-hmm. run into this issue, we'll be like, you know what? If you want to get this fixed right away, put it on the bounty board. Stick some uh, stick some cash on it. And it'll get done. It's smart. Yeah, and that's a really good idea because you throw out some money rewards behind even the possibility of a bug. If you found a bug and you know how to fix it, but you really can't be asked because you have better things to do with your day, all of a sudden there's a bit of a bounty with a couple of hundred bucks on it. It's like okay, give me. Hey man, listen, bounties get shit done. Good to see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, gerbils, uh, dead gerbils, but somebody wants to help you configure your dead gerbils? Question mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is from Gianluca Nitty. This is the um, this is a driver for what do they call it? The Perix M three thousand mouse. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a configuration utility uh, for Linux. Uh, hey you man, I, I, I like how uh, they point out unofficial config. Listen, if I'm getting conf- configuration tool off GitHub, yeah, I, I think you can spare <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a it's a wee unofficial. Uh, you can't buy this mouse anymore. I actually looked around. There's still some Amazon pages up, but they're still they're all out of stock. Uh, I couldn't find a place where you could pick this up. So if you have one, this might be a tool you want to use. Uh, though I will say. For all of these sort of hardware uh, hardware interface uh, programs, maybe think about contributing to LibRatBag because yes, having 9,000 tools is not a good way to promote usage of Linux, right? If you can say, hey, if you just plug your game... Again, it's all about the out-of-the-box experience. If you can plug mm-hmm. your gaming mouse in, hey, there's a little GUI utility for configuring it. It's all consolidated in this one handy-dandy library that's already pre-installed with your distribution. People will be like, fucking sick it's the same thing with um the open source amd drivers you plug your video card in and you can just start playing games right off the bat people will love that shit they will eat it up because Mm -hmm. having to hunt down drivers and do configuration is a pain in the butt and Mm -hmm. it's uh to your point uh, there's like okay there's the razor stuff there's the rowcat stuff there's the steel series stuff Every single one of those have their own independent, uh, semi-proprietary, mostly reverse-engineered software that goes along with it. If you want to customize what the buttons do, if you want to set some macros, if you want to change the color of the LEDs, what have you. Each and every single one have a different library, have a different uh, little GUI front end for doing all that. 
just get it all into lib rat bag. Just make that standard. Make that, like Jordan said, the out of the box experience for when you plug in your gerbil, you can configure all of that. It's just, oh, you have one of these. Okay, here's the GUI. Listen, man, I Done. still maintain that if you have a gerbil <laughs> that requires a GUI to configure some blinky LED bullshit, you've made poor life choices. Um, it doesn't require a GUI. It's just, the GUI just makes it easier. I don't know, man. <laughs> As someone who l l l tore l apart a, my, what is this, the Logitech G500S, it's like a $65 gerbil. Um, earlier this week to replace one of their busted ass super cheap micro switches. Yeah. Fuck you. Logitech. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad this tool exists. I, but Jordan, you're hundred percent right. This is something that you should plug in. It should come up as an option. This is steam controller type shit, man. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. Linux has such good potential to just be an awesome out of the box experience because you don't have to fuck with drivers. You don't have to screw with anything and everything is available immediately in the repository. Anyways, coming up next, we discuss the problematic aspects of Howard Phillips Lovecraft's writing and why a specific Serbian scientist and inventor decided that maybe he wants to electrocute this guy. I was actually going to pull up a Lovecraft quote, quote uh, to sort of preface this uh, chair acquisition with, but I forgot because don't do drugs, kids. This is Tesla versus Lovecraft. <laughs> it's developed by 10 tons limited. It's done on a custom engine. You can pick it up for around 15 of your local particular currency. What is it? Tesla versus Lovecraft is an intense top-down twin stick arena shooter from the creators of Crimson Land and Neon Crom. Play as the enigmatic inventor, Nikola Tesla, harnessing the static energy power or uh, static energy to power up the <laughs> Tesla mech and give Lovecraftian nightmares a lesson in horror. Uh, devs did send us some keys for this. What is this? You've never skipped to this part. Maybe you're really, really drunk going through YouTube. You come to in the middle of your drunken stupor, and all of a sudden this is on. This is the chair QA edition. This is where we take a video game, we play it a little bit, we discuss it, we do a little QA that the uh, developers should have done before pushing it out to production, and then we give you a fun plot based on some lawn chairs like those. One chair means that it's garbage, two chairs means that it's meh, three chairs means that it's pretty good, four chairs means that it's amazing, and we take these lovely, lovely chair scores and we associate them to our categories. Odoom makes it working, shining sands controls. And fun. So let's kick this off. Then Tesla versus Lovecraft. Did it blurk? Boom. Um, Ubuntu 1710 Ryzen 1700, 16 gigajoules of RAM powered by a 980 displayed at UHD, which this game runs at a uh, pretty much clean bill of health, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing really to complain about. Uh, it did have some weird, freaky V Sync issues at first, just like at the top line, something I'd never seen. But it, it was me playing around with um, geo pipeline compositing and stuff that dark arts you don't want to mess with. Uh, nothing really terrible to complain about. So, you know, I'll, I'll give it a solid three because I'm still seeing that tearing every now and then. There's not an option to enable disable VSync or anything like that. Nothing negative against it. So, Jordan, how did it run on the Intel box? On uh, the i7-6700K with the GTX 980 running Fedora 26, yeah, no real issues. Aside from a minor nitpick in that um, the full screen doesn't actually trap your cursor. So if you got X separate mm -hmm. X screens going on, if you uh, swing your mouse a little too far to the left or right, depending on where your other X screens are positioned, you get kicked out of the game, which when you're trying There's to unfuck yourself. for that. <laughs> is there? Well, I didn't see it, yeah. so fuck you. I didn't bring it a chair for it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it, it ran exceptionally well. I didn't have any uh, tearing issues, at least none that I was able to see while I was being surrounded by awful, awful monsters from beyond time. I'll give it four cheers. What about you, Pedro? Yeah, no, actually, the uh, lock mouse cursor to the window was uh, something I was very happy to see because it's the first thing I do whenever I go into a new game. It's option screen. Basically change out the controls so I can play it with my uh, left-handedness and uh, have a look at the uh, graphics menu. And I did run into the uh, the thing that Ven described in the notes, which is the resolution that you're currently at always shows up three times. and But it doesn't that, really make that, a difference. That's, that's, so, so that's actually a Tesla reference because he was obsessed with the number three. 
Yeah, okay, that's good on them then. Uh, but yeah, uh, outside of that, absolutely no issues. I didn't notice any tearing on my end with uh, on Ubuntu 1604 with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. So as far as I can tell, it gets the four chairs. Mm-hmm. All right, well, Nikola Tesla would be happy with the score that he gets now well, with his three obsession because he gets three chairs <laughs> mixed with working. How about the shiny and sounds? I actually, I like the little designs that... At, so at first, I didn't really like care about the looks or feel of the game, but as you start getting more and more of the enemies, I'm like, oh, I like these kind of designs for like the Lovecraftian monster horrors. They're kind of cute. Uh, the soundtrack was <laughs> a bit of all right. I mean, I, I, I found myself not really paying attention to it, what with having more <laughs> Lovecraftian horrors to deal with <laughs> than I could shake a pistol at. So it kind of faded off into the background. But like for the style of game it is, it is entirely acceptable. Uh, you get your little every, every, everything is different enough. There's no real issues with character blindness, um, except nope. when you get swarmed. But that's kind of the point. <laughs> so that that's actually pretty good for games like these because, like, when you have swarms of stuff, it's really easy to lose yourself. Well, but, um, uh, I, I think there's a issue. like an interesting solution to character blindness is draw a green circle around your character. A really shiny that, green that circle, yeah. <laughs> Um, which, which, which is also your health bar. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's the thing, man. Uh, I liked it. The graphics, they work, but that's about it. I mean, they're, they're nothing to get crazy about. They, they serve their purpose. Personally, after playing this for a little bit, I'd like to see a version of this game a la Shadow of Warrior, or like a first-person type swarm, just because this is a murderation simulator. Your baddies, mm-hmm. tons of swarms, uh, kind of generic. I, I didn't fall in love with them like you did, man. But the music, a bit of all right, because like eh, right out of the box, I was listening to it. Da, 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 the squirrel, I had to do some stuff. Just the title screen music started in like a few seconds into that. It's like, oh, all right, I, I'm going to keep the headphones on. I'm not going to put on the Slayer, and it really works. It genuinely helps out with the action, man. So I, mm-hmm. I, I, I can throw it a solid two plus an plus an Astrid. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, I'm totally I, I, I with you on three. that one. Uh, the uh, background music and how well it fits with the action that's going on and when there's a little lull and there's less enemies uh, that are currently spawned in and coming after your ass there's a like a little lull in the background music and then you get oh shit there's like 40 enemies in the map right now and they're all around me and the music kicks up it's like yes yes Uh, the rest of the sounds eh here one enemy of a given type die you've heard of them all but the music was really well done the graphics yeah this, uh, they're kind of meh for a top-down shooter for what it is it works but it, they're nothing to write home about so as far as i'm concerned they get uh, the three chairs <laughs> yeah i gave them three as well so if we tally all that up you get two chairs with an asteroid for the shiny and the sounds uh mr control stickler pedro what do you think about the twin stick controls uh, you know what? Uh, it's a it's a twin stick shooter, which doesn't do something stupid between the camera angle and pushing uh, down on a given direction in your controller or your keyboard or whatever. Bring a door. Yeah. Still haven't forgotten about that. Uh, it's uh, the way you control the game is actually remarkably similar to Assault Android Cactus, which we talked about a while back. Uh in both how well it works with the keyboard or controller or what have you, but the general feel of how your character moves around and the different types of weapons and everything, that's uh, it's actually not a bad thing to be compared to Assault Android Cactus because, if you may remember, that game got a very, very solid three chairs. So, uh, mmm, looked good. I'll give it four chairs for controls, actually. <laughs> mm. Then, Hey, man. Get to check out the controls. Nothing really to complain about here. Even if you're trying to, it's your standard top-down joint. You run backwards and you shoot shit. I mean, this is a simple formula. <laughs> yep. Tried and true. Uh, unfortunately, I did find that it is absolutely not suited for playing with the Steam controller, the Areola controller, at all, no matter what you do with it. Maybe you can. I mean, this begs for actual physical twin sticks. I remember Trugs, like two weeks ago, was talking about that being an issue Case in point, this game, um, barring that, it works fine, gerbil keyboard combo, and uh, didn't have a single issue to report. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've found that like for twin stick shooters for me, I work better with a keyboard and mouse. It does work with the uh, DualShock 4 controller, which is good stuff. Uh, I, I really, really detest when games have issues with that. Um, but yeah, uh, keyboard and mouse, everything works fine. Even on the controller, everything's sanely laid out. Uh, I have no issues with it whatsoever. It's all the twin stick controls. Mm -hmm. Give it four chairs. And that's four chairs for the controls. So let's put a bow on it. Then, did you have fun? Um, hey, man. Th this game won me over like right at the beginning when you first discover that you get a mech. And it's named War Pigeon. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Just somebody knows their history. That's the thing uh, I do enjoy, speaking of the mech, chasing down the mech parts. That's an interesting mechanic. It kind of keeps you way wicked busy. I mean, it's kind of insane. And um, that's followed by a bunch of uh, RNG perks. It's kind of interesting. And you are absolutely forced to use them. And sometimes they work. And sometimes you get dealt a bad hand. It's kind of like a weird card game. Uh, it's something you can pop in, play for five minutes, pop out and don't have to worry about rage quitting. And I never felt that with this. He's like, boom, boom, boom. Mm, all right. I'm done with that. Come back to it. I was like, okay, that's another thing. Um, let's see. Uh, doo, doo, doo. okay. What, when it comes to just kind of playing it in little chunks, that is definitely something you might think about doing because each level is legitimate. If you're watching the video version at home, it's legitimate nonstop because fuck you. That's why action. I mean, it reminds me of like half life two level of it just doesn't stop until you get to the end. What I will say is 1499 is a little, little bit on the high side for a bullet hell game. It is just a little bit, but what I should really say is 1499 is a little on the high side for a bullet hell without online multiplayer. <laughs> Yeah, the the yeah. local co-op thing was a, a bit of a misstep, in my opinion. I mean, again, go back to our flow chart. Are you including multiplayer in your game in 2018? Yeah, make it, make it uh, network multiplayer. But, I mean, as far as shmups go, this one isn't too bad. Uh, this, this is one of the few that like I can actually tolerate playing. And to Ven's point about being sort of an anti-rage quit architecture, he's right. Um, like... Yeah, I, I found myself struggling on like one or two levels sometimes, but it never got frustrating. It's like, okay, no, I need I may, maybe a different power up set will help me out, or maybe if I maybe if I try a different weapon, or maybe if I adopt a different strategy and actually learn the map a little bit so that I don't get stuck in a fuck box. Um, yeah, like, and the the, the five minute playtime on most of the levels keeps is right at that short and sweet point where you can, you can invest as much or as little time as you want in the game and still feel like you're making progress, uh, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, the, I, I, I like the, the, I do like the uh, character building thing where you have to, um, where you have to like collect power ups and un you unlock new perks and whatnot. Uh, my favorite combination has to be like pierce through bullets with like the multi shot mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. how I beat the first boss is I got four multi shot one armor piercing and one increased fire speed. And it was just freaking spray and pray. Like the entire screen was just filled with bullets as I was just like, <laughs> like I, I even killed the boss from the other side of the map just cause I was just freaking spraying and praying. It was great. Um, I mean, if you, if you played uh, stuff like assault Android cactus, like Pedro said, or what, what this really reminded me more of was like a uh, serious Sam, uh, bogus detour. detour. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they um they, they they play very similarly, and it's it's kind of like that without the jokes and more old timey references and Tesla and Lovecraft stuff. Um, yeah, no, this is this is a fun little game. Fifteen bucks is a little cheap. I'd say wait till this goes on sale or in a bundle, but it's definitely worth your time. Even if you don't like shmups, like this, this is definitely going to be one of those ones that like might even change your mind about the genre, hmm. or at least be one well, positive example you can use. Yeah, I wouldn't say change your mind about the genre, but if you're kind of meh on the genre, like myself, uh, this game does something right. Uh, I don't know if it's the short levels, I don't know if it's the music, but it does something really, really well. And the whole, you pick it up, you play it, 
Uh, you can spend about as long as you have free on it, and you will not get bored because it's every single level nonstop. And then you go to the menu, you, you get up, you get you get a drink, you get uh, something to eat, and then you come right back. Next level, boom, boom, boom. You want to spend five minutes on it? You can probably get two levels done. You want to spend an hour on it? You can. And the music, the music is really, really good. Uh, I brought this up when uh, we threw chairs at Valley. That first segment uh, where you're running on the electrified rails and what they did with the music, they did something very similar with uh, Tesla v. Lovecraft, and I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, Tesla versus Lovecraft, Lovecraft, uh, cynical namesake cash grab aside, I was actually uh, surprised with how much fun I was having with this game. Uh, again, I'm not that big a fan of twin stick shooters, but this one got me to have some fun. So yes, as far as I'm concerned for a single player game, yeah, not having uh, online multiplayer is kind of a downer, but for a, the single player game that it is, as far as I'm concerned, four chairs. Yeah, that's uh, three chairs from Ben and I, four chairs from Pedro. Gets three chairs on the fun tally all that up, and lo and behold, we get a big old three chairs for Tesla versus Lovecraft. Definitely go check this one out. This is mm -hmm. I was I was pleasantly surprised with this one as well. Yeah, I, I, I had a similar thought process to Pedro. It's like, yeah, Tesla versus Lovecraft. That's like that's so stupid. It's like, oh, what's what's two people from like the nineteen tens <laughs> that people really like? Oh, Tesla and Lovecraft. What's hey man, uh, at least it wasn't like a pigeon dating simulator, right? Which it could have also <laughs> been. Well, that that would have just been a Tesla simulator. <laughs> yeah, or 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 just like being a three obsessed vegetarian who didn't like sex. Anyways, um, I think I think that about wraps it for the chairquisition. Coming up next, we got some hate mail, and by hate mail, I mean people start asking us questions about. Linux games. Very little hate. Well, it wasn't as big a show as what we've usually been done lately, but usually been done lately? Wow, my brain's gone. I was going to let you <laughs> well, slide on that motherfucker. <laughs> no, 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 no. I had to call myself out on that one because, wow, that was bad. But that should give you an idea of just how bad my brain is because, hey, it's the end of the show. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, point out something that we were wrong about. Point out how much you disagree with something what we said. Maybe you played Tesla versus Lovecraft and you hated it. Well, go to ladiesgamecast.com. Hit the contact button, fill out the form. Pretty easy. Make sure LGC Weekly is the thing that you pick. Or if you'd like some relationship advice, you can do that. Jordan's right here, right now, and he will be happy to answer your... Well, happy's a stretch, but he will answer your questions. Uh, so uh, this week we have two bits of ha hate. Hate's a strong one. Man, word. you are like in the fuck-up Olympics this evening. That's yes, the fuck Olympics. <laughs> and, and anyways, this, fir this first one's from uh, JS Birch. And he's talking about uh, home theater PCs, and he says those AMD graphics still blow on Linux. Looking to build, looking at building an HTPC gaming PC. So there's a little bit of tautology there. And the twenty two hundred <laughs> appears to be steel. Enjoy the show. Thank, thank you. Um, anyways, <laughs> yes, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing with it. Here's the thing with uh, AMD APUs because I went down that road a couple years ago, and I ended up uh, throwing a low-profile 750 Ti in there afterwards. Um, if you're just going to be doing hipster pixel games or like really low-power uh, multiplayer games, then APUs will do you fine. If you want to do like some game streaming stuff, you may want to look at investing in a um, more beefy GPU. That said, the the, the GPUs that come on these uh, Zen APUs now are pretty beefy. So I don't know how I don't. And uh, g given the state of AMD drivers on Linux these days, I don't really feel confident in making a judgment either way. I I'm really looking forward to those um, R7 2700E laptops because I want to fuck around with it for that exact reason. I think it'll definitely be something yeah. to play around with. I mean, maybe kind of sort of. I don't know personally about um Either of them. I, I do feel like Jordan and I are in a blinking contest who blinks first on picking up the 2400G in some shape, form, or fashion. But mm -hmm. yeah, the 2200, it's kind of a weird one. I think that would be overkill for an HTPC. 
but a little bit weak if you were going to do some gaming, light gaming. Well, maybe like wicked, wicked light gaming on a Steam box. Yeah. I'd go with the 2400. And like legit, 100%. I had the 2400 and the motherboard getting ready to check out at Amazon. And I was like, let's grab some like four gigs of fucking RAM. Fuck you, RAM still even four <laughs> gigs, dude. I was like, no. Yeah. Uh-uh. That's going to cost as much as the <laughs> motherboard. I guess that's the appeal of the 2200. It really is the price because it's sub 100 bucks if you can find it at MSRP, which, you know, good luck with that. But yeah, it's like that sub 100 buck uh, price. And then, yeah, you're probably going to end up paying more for the motherboard mm-hmm. and about twice as much as the motherboard for the RAM. So eh. I do want to make a point, though. I'm, I'm willing to take like the Pepsi challenge and say Vega is going to be sound as a pre Brexit pound by the end of 2018 on Linux. So pre Brexit pound. Mm -hmm. That's bold claim. (laughs) I'm just saying. All right. Well, uh, the, the, the the next one's from uh, Kyle Linux, Kyle Linux cast. And he says, I've been waiting for the rise of the Tomb Raider on Linux. I wonder if this means they'll port near automata since they seem to have a good relationship with Squeenix. I'll even settle for Sonic Mania if they can get some love from Sega. Momodora was made in Game Maker, apparently. Okay. All right. So that's something yep. we... Did we get it wrong? I honestly mm-hmm. don't remember. It was... We we talked about it last week, week before. Mm-hmm. My memory is a bit fuzzy. Uh, that said, uh, Nira Tomato is... Uh, it's one of those Japanese Queenix games, and we haven't seen any of those being ported by Feral yet. It's just all the Queenix published games that are developed in the West the, that they publish. No, it, it, it's spe- specifically it's the IDOS ones that they uh, inherited when yeah. they bought out that company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, uh, we'll, just, we'll just have to wait and see, man. I mean, Vulcan's gonna be. Mm. It. And uh, Feral already does have some love from uh, Sega because of all them strategy games, what they love porting so much. I'm just going to keep writing this. The total total (laughs) snort. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's possible. It looks like uh, Feral's kind of stuck in their rut, putting out uh, Codemasters games, uh, Total War games, and then the odd Squeenix thing that is developed by Mm -hmm. a Western studio under the Squeenix banner. So maybe 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 in the far distant future, we might see like an open source reimplementation of uh, Near Automata. But yeah, I, I wouldn't I wait on very it, far yeah. distant future. Yes, yeah, hundred percent on that. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I do believe it, it's time to say, on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around nine thirty Eastern Moon Time. It is kind of brilliant. Come join us live. Party with us if you're watching after the fact. And stay for the after shows where we get into some gaming of sorts. I'm Vin Stone. You can find me on Twitter or just Vin Stone in Google. I'm there somewhere. I'm Jordan Spung. I'm holding my breath that one day Feral will finally port me to Linux. I'm, I'm hoping and praying and maybe maybe someday it'll happen. I, I see it on the Feral radar. It's coming eventually. <laughs> you find me at the Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan Spung on Google+. Plus. I'm pretty sure Jordan's a very um, complicated code base to port to Linux, but hey, I, I'm much uh, simpler in the head. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google Plus. Well, we didn't learn too much this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we learned how not to pronounce Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy okay <laughs> we learned that if we start fucking up early we, we can double down on that shit by the end of the show right? <laughs> pretty much yeah. uh, here's some credits <laughs> man made it through another one. <laughs> oh man like what, what, once, once you got once Pedro got through like the the hate mail intro, I realized, man, I really have to pee like super bad. What the fuck? <laughs> well, the trick to doing that uh, is focus on it that. really, it really, it really hard, and imagine uh, a cup of ice water with some ice jiggling around in it. <laughs> jiggle, 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 jiggle. 
The the trick is to have a bottle handy under your desk. Oh no. <laughs> that, that that's never good. That that that's dangerous. Bro. That just goes everywhere. <laughs> no, I mean, if you don't know how to aim, I. Well, I mean, I guess in your case it would fit, but um, I don't trust. Uh, I don't trust myself. <laughs> Listen, man, if I'm in a situation where I'd have to piss in the bottle, I'm just going to piss in the floor. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, where's the nearest shrub? I'm going to pee behind that shrub. Five dudes. <laughs>